All the people that Stephen King knows sounds like he is lying. <laughs> it's like, I would like to thank my friends who helped this one. G. Everett McCutcheonson. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. John Pearson of Old Down, Maine, and who could forget Father Renald Halee? <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking lying, Stephen. These are. I'd like to thank Glooby Glob and Glob. Uh, hold on, I gotta take this call. It's my agent, Rickamadi McDookie Doo. Hello, Ricka? <laughs> Medee's his middle name. <laughs> Hello, Stephen. I need your new book. Hello. <laughs> You're 10 years past the deadline. <laughs> Good old Stephen King. He is cool, man, but it's interesting, you know, I, like I said yesterday, like I have such a pop cultural perspective on him. I it's it's very it, everything that I know about Stephen King and my whole flavor of Stephen King has come from how he exists in just pop culture as a name, as an entity. And as then a, you realize that like, he's way better of an author than that. This is what I was saying yesterday, which is weird. The first real Stephen King book I ever read was his writing book mm -hmm. before I like actually. And again, I knew, you know, I know Carrie, I know the stories that he has done and I know their general things, but it was weird to actually start reading them because there's a lot, there's like things in a way I'm almost disappointed about where it's not quite what you imagined the, punch that I desired. It doesn't, it, you know what I mean? Every, sure. the, the, the taste I'm getting isn't quite as pulpy and exciting as I maybe expected. Yeah, it's, it's not really, was the section on how to write an ending just like a bunch he of question marks? does he not know. Over well, and over he, and over and over no, again. but this is one of the, and it's something I, I liked and something I took away from it is he has the, is I even said this like yesterday or whatever, but he, he would say that he like t chases a, basically a tableau image of like, okay, I think what's interesting is the guy and the girl in this room and the one guy has the blah, blah, blah. And like just that, and that's a lot. I mean, I feel like that's a lot of people when they're writing. That's like the idea comes from this one little nugget that you're chasing this golden little glowing image in your mind. You're like, oh, okay, so then how do I make sure that that is a story? How do I make that make sense? Edgar Wright was talking about this with baby driver where it was him listening to bell bottoms and imagining a getaway driver and imagining the whole song set to a chase. And then he was like, okay, I got to make a, movie around that and sometimes he said like sometimes I'll know the end like he'll know who lives or who dies but then he was also saying but also sometimes I'm surprised and I'll realize that I've written someone into a situation and I'm like oh well they're not gonna die then they're gonna they're gonna get through this and then that changes how I thought it was gonna end. and I mean that's just right. I guess that's just writing but I guess you can do that with a novel but it's interesting it's in the meandering it's just it's all it's figuring it out as you're going being like yeah. I don't really quite know what it is yet I don't he know he does have a lot like the stand is a perfect example of that there's four acts yeah. true acts you know what I mean mm, like things yeah. drastically change and there's something about that that's so pardon the word novel God, yeah, you're like, there's like four books in the stand. The first book with the plague, Captain Trips, like that could be its own fucking thing. And then it keeps going and you're just like, oh my God, it, the stand yeah. is really good. The stand is like a crowning yeah, achievement. I think you'd love that. Are we going? To where? Have we been? For how long? Oh, I assume that we were. We're recording? Of course yeah. we are. What are we recording? <laughs> Welcome everybody Here we to, are. Uh, to Bonusable Bonusable barf. Beef. I guess we just accidentally ended up in front of a bunch of microphones. <laughs> I suppose it makes sense that I thought you knew. I was really actively yeah. structuring our conversation. I was playing to yeah. the mic. I was, <laughs> that's what I was like. Wow, you guys are doing. This. But that's why because Tim just started looking at his phone when you were talking. And I was like, what? What? what what's going on? Like, I just <laughs> thought you knew. You didn't. I thought it was no bonus man. I'm playing beef. my Dragon Ball Z free to play game. That looks pretty cool. It's very fun, and I've put a lot of money into it. <laughs> Please really? don't tell my family. How much do you think you spent? No, I have really. It's like twenty bucks. All right. I think I have this thing about That's free to play. No, no, no. I have this thing about free to play games. Right? If I'm yeah. enjoying it, if I'm having a good time, yeah, I yeah. don't mind putting money into it because it deserves it. You know what I mean? Like I would have paid twenty bucks for this game. The amount of enjoyment I've got in this game, I've pulled out. I've pulled at least twenty dollars. But that's out. my. I would never do it up front, no matter how much I'm sure I would Absolutely. enjoy it. Absolutely, I would never pay twenty dollars for a game, but or for a phone game of all things. But but I've started to reason it with like, all right. Would I go out? I go out. I go to Starbucks. This fucking coffee was four bucks. Right. Would I really not put four bucks into this to get a new Spider-Man costume in my game? You know what? I think I would. Sure. I would trade a coffee for a Spider-Man costume on my phone. Of course I, I would. Like if somebody came in and said, yeah. if you give me that coffee, I'll give you an exclusive Spider-Man. I'd be like, fuck yeah, yeah of course dude. I will. Yeah. Yes, that yes. This is a weird trade. Yeah, but, but I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you found me. How do, I don't know how you got this in my office. Do you have a security key? How did you get in here? I'm still going to have, <laughs> I'm going to have my soul, right? That's not, I'm not also. <laughs> <laughs> to be seen. 
<laughs> but there's also just like any any kind of new model, it changes the way the games are presented, which sure. is not great sometimes. No, no, no. Because I you mean, design yeah. the game around selling people on this yep. shit, which is it can be good, it can be interesting. Like I think the Dragon Ball Z game is very fair. They give you plenty of the, yeah. the that exclusive premium currency. You don't ever really have to pay. Well, but some games are fucking very gross with it. I have this Marvel one too, but it get, it's it's annoying because I think they're obscene. Yeah, they it does get gross. See, there's things though. Also, I loved. The the, uh, I didn't even play through the whole fucking game, but I did it because it was like, what a deal. I can't afford to not do it. The Mario one? Oh, Super Yeah, Mario Run. run. Sure. I paid whatever the $10, $10 where they were like, it's the whole game now. You have everything. You're not going to get stopped by any paying shit. Right. And I was like, fucking sure. But that's a, yeah, that's a good model. And I did that. I paid $10, but then these other, like this fucking Marvel one, you get to a point where it's like, yeah, so like I want the homecoming suit, right? It's fifteen hundred of the damn crystals, and you look at when you the prices of how you actually pay for them. It's like you get fifteen hundred for like thirty dollars. I'm like, dude, Whoa. what? And it's and yep. it's impossible to also get them organically. Like, meanwhile, I would gladly grind in your game and and watch your 10 second ads if yeah. I was consistently getting the damn crystals but you're just Absolutely. not so then you get to this point where you're like what do you expect of me people are just going to stop playing when I do I've dropped so many games because of that where you get to the point where it's a, yeah. it's a fucking brick wall of either you're going to be paying 30 bucks every couple or weeks you're done or playing. you're not yeah and that's exactly the thing that a lot of free play runs into where it's like you, well, you, you, eventually it reaches a point when excuse me I'm vomiting uh, you can't play yeah, it looks great you can't play or compete or play with other people at a level unless you're right. dumping hundreds of dollars into it right. which is um that sucks yeah, but like, it's also incredibly profitable because it works because it hits the same buttons in your brain as gambling does yeah it hits those same ideas of like oh you're a winner like you're succeeding you have this thing you have this like big crew look at all that look at this look at all your flashy big superheroes you have like look they have this is a limited rare see this is fucking stupid look i'm I'm looking at it right now. My that's Spider-Man. The price went down. Ooh, they they cut you a deal because mm -hmm. it's because the deal's ending. It's now 750 crystals. You can buy. I have 210 organically, and I've been playing it for a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. so you don't get them a lot. You can buy five. You can buy 165 crystals for three three bucks 275 for five dollars and 550 for ten dollars and then the next one up is 1650 crystals for thirty dollars so there's no way in the, i i yep. like just by the fact that i have 200 already i could do the one that's ten dollars and get it but then i got re like really you spend ten dollars on a fucking virtual suit that's this big that's this big yeah, yeah. but then like i think tens pushing it though because then there's more there's more suits coming up i yeah, would pay ten dollars yeah. for like a spider-man pack of suits where it's like oh the Absolutely. whole time i would rather have food but that's well, yeah exactly. me too if it comes down to food or a spider-man <laughs> digital suit of course i pick food but like but you're spending money on a thing that you're deriving enjoyment from yes. regardless of what it is which is what entertainment is it's I a agree. commodity it, it, it's nothing yeah, you're, what, what, you're always spending money what on what kind nothing. of mileage are you getting out of that fucking enjoyment man you spend $10 on that suit and you probably you're I like, spent $19 to go see Valerian yeah. last night and I get more enjoyment out of my Dragon Ball Z game that I put the same amount of money into yeah. so sure. why would I go see a movie but it sounds but what Dom's saying is it sounds like that you've, you've value, it's not worth the $10 like it's not is it worth $10 the, exactly, to, but everybody's is, value of money is different there's some rich dude who's like yeah yeah, I'm with Ted Osh. I got the best Spider-Man. But Tim's right in that, and this is the same. I have the same view about movies in a different way. As far as I've put, I've very recently put a lot more value on the small pleasures in this world than I ever have before. Which is why Nick. That's why, like sometimes when you tell me. <laughs> Even if it's not a spoiler, but you tell oh, me no. you tell me a character is in a next episode, and I didn't know, so it's fine because you didn't ruin the story why, for me. Why is this such a confrontation? I don't. I'm just explaining to you that that's where this comes from. That's why when I get mad at you for just telling me a thing, it's like I get it. You're not ruining it, but now that little brain blast I would have right. had when he walked on screen, and I was like, yeah. oh, I didn't know you, you actively was, stole you, you dopamine got that away. from like, me. I don't have that anymore. So same thing with like this game where yeah, it, I get that little dopamine rush when I get to see Spidey running around with the suit from Homecoming on uh -huh. my screen. I like that. I like to control that suit. Right. That's, that's, a, that's, that's cool. all your life is. You're just raising and lowering the chemical levels in your brain right. and just fucking with it just spending money and hoping that this will make the right So then it's like, so now that I've, I've now actively placed more value on those small little, yeah, when I'm sitting on the toilet, is it going to be fun to look at the Homecoming suit swing around? 
Yeah, you know what it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'll pay five bucks. And I'm wondering if there's some guy who, it might either be market testing where it's like, let's see. Let's see if they'll spend it. Or it could be like they know that they have, there is just the right amount of audience that's spending that margin of money, right, so like that amount of money. It. So that's worth it for them to keep running those servers. And I was waiting because it went down from 1500. I'm sorry to throw you under the bus there. It was, it was relative. That's okay. Go, it, go. It's not a real anger. It's like, it, that's, <laughs> it's, it's worth as much as it is. It's as small as it is right. across the board. Which is all you have. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was waiting. See, now there's only like 18 hours left on this deal. So maybe I'll still wait, but I'll end up forgetting. But it already went down from 1500 to 750 because they were like, <laughs> I'm going to keep an eye on the market for this. No, seriously. Well, if it's going to end up being less and I don't got to spend a shitload of money to get the same little dopamine rush, then I absolutely but there, will. But wait like, then it here's out. the thing when you're doing this and you're like watching market prices, <laughs> go fucking invest in some damn yeah. stocks. <laughs> like, go, yes, make, yeah. go make some money. There's a certain like. I have this thing about free to play games where I like to have them as my thing to do, yeah. but Clash of Clans people are insane. Spent thousands of dollars on this game, mm. have like six accounts running so they can be the best. It's like, dog, go invest, go invest money, and yeah. you can make this money, you can make more money with yeah. your money. There's At a certain point, you hit that, but you know, there's that level of involvement where it's it's hitting me at just the right amount of my time and energy, just the right amount of enjoyment, and, and there's that very special balance. And yeah. that's why there's so many free to play games is because nobody, well, I don't think nobody, but like everybody's trying to find that balance yeah. because it's a direct line to your pocket. This they become your go-to entertainment source. Yeah. And this game even I was impressed with because this is one of those ones where they're uh, like the characters aren't just skins either. Yeah. You get like diff they do different yeah, shit. They're modeled and they move up. different. Yeah. They have different animation on them. And I'm like, oh, okay, you guys actually like gifts. And there's so many fucking characters in this. I have a character on my team. He's like my lead dude right now. His name is Warwolf. And somehow I didn't even know he existed in the Marvel <laughs> Universe. And now he's my favorite guy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Warwolf. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> They've I think he's really like done everyone. I think he's a rocket raccoon. I think he might be a Guardians related dude. Oh, Because like he, he sort of looks like, I think he's wearing the same thing like Rocket. He got juiced up. See? That's Warwolf in the middle there. Oh, Ghost Rider. You tap him, cool. he'll do something, I think. That's a shield outfit, my man. Oh, is it a shield yeah, outfit? That's, the, that's the, the shield uniform. And Ghost Rider, Robert, Reyes, yeah. Warwolf, and Spidey. Because that Ghost Rider looks cooler than the normal Ghost Rider. Yeah, because he's thin. Cause he's not, cause you like him, cause he's wayfish and, and yeah, twinky. <laughs> Looks I, like a fucking. I, oh my god, dude, that's like a seven star character. I know, and I got those guys by accident. What the fuck is this game, dude? There's like a million there's gauges so, and meters and things that I'm a, looking it's at. It's complicated, and there's so many fucking characters in it. It's mind boggling. Yeah, I've gotten. Is some, this the fighting one? This is uh, what's it called? Future fight. Yeah, is it yeah. the one where you're like you push the things and you're but you fight an AI. You don't fight real people, right? No, that's the other one. This is this is like a the PVP. That's like the Power Rangers fighting game that I played yeah, for weeks. Yeah, no. This is like a what's it called? Oh, I got a new content. Good. Oh, I got new content. Wait, no, I don't want to do a daily mission. Let's do the story. I think that's the worst thing about all of this is that it's gotten marketing people to make us talk like marketing people. Yeah. Mm, I don't new know. New this isn't disruptive content. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? You want to play? No. <laughs> it's okay. We're, 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 recording. <laughs> we're recording a podcast. I know. <laughs> but I think this is an interesting conversation to have because it's what is value in a video game and it's in a very mm. different market and they're trying new different things and it's uh this is really digital versus mainstream film because there's still yeah. console games happening yeah. by mainstream right. publishers but then you have these fucking guys that maybe aren't doing things that would be commercial products like they could never be commercial products but for whatever reason they find an audience right. and they just work um, Flappy Bird is like a you know stupid yeah. shit oh, like that God. where it's like where would that have gone exactly. except for a phone exactly yeah. um, and I think that there's value to that but then the question becomes like is this going to become the new mainstream or is this going to be well, the way just like its own thing no but it's interesting because they've sort of like hedged their bets a little bit in that you know I'm the guy who did sort of grow up and I didn't buy a PS4 I didn't buy an Xbox One like I fell away from it completely mm -hmm. and I probably wouldn't play games if it wasn't for these things that are on my phone that 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 tick it off and again it's the time yeah it's the 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 time it's asking of me is short you know what i mean right. i can just pop in beat some dudes up that's fun for me i'll still spend money on this thing yeah and i'm gonna buy a fucking place i mean this is a separate reason but i'm about to i'm gonna buy a playstation 4 for the spider-man Spider absolutely i'm 100 percent right. certain about it 
well, what they're doing is I, the term for it is ecosystem. They're pulling you into their ecosystem of, of, right. of but I'm content. on the outskirts and right. then I'm slowly getting pulled into the gravitational yeah. center. And Marvel in particular has been very good at uh, leveraging good indie talent. Mm-hmm. Like they, all of their games are pretty much made by a different team. All of their free to play games are all by different people. Like a huh. yeah, I've Demiurge that. does um, the their Marvel thing, and what they so Puzzle Quest was a really great series of like a console puzzle games mixed with RPGs, and that pretty much exists as a free to play model now. What mm-hmm. they did was D three sold it to a bunch of companies, and they're just like, yeah, of course we'll do a, like an RPG puzzle game like Match Three. So they did it for uh, Marvel, and it did really well. They did it for Magic: The Gathering, and it did really well Mm. which and i think that that's an interesting model where you have a game and you're like let me skin this with a bunch of different properties and then do a unique thing maybe relevant to that property and then just see where it goes Mm. that's a great i that's a great model for making games yeah, yeah, I'm just always, I've always been curious about, I mean, game, again, we, we've talked about this recently, that games have been the one thing where as much as I was, but see my, my, even my experience though, originally, like, I feel like everybody has the same sort of base. You, you're a weirdo, Tim, who has, like, and you too, Nate, honestly, you guys have that, that knowledge of like, while I was playing the base level, every PlayStation one game and Jesus. every Nintendo 64 game, which I feel like I at least share that stuff with people Yeah, that there's that, uh, whatever floor of knowledge. But then meanwhile, you were also peripherally getting Japanese games and you had the fucking Sega Saturn, which I never even touched. Sure. You know what I mean? So it was like, it's interesting though, that I maybe am not the right per- I don't know maybe no matter what I was always going to sort of fall away because I was in the first place not right. Right. not all in you were I, never obsessively looking up unused no sprites. no I yeah. wasn't I was oh Mario doesn't turn this way at any point in the game <laughs> this is fascinating oh I just watched one on Earthbound and it's like actually if you break the camera you can see this character's back which we never see in the game yeah. and it's fucking <laughs> stupid he's wearing you know blue pants and a hat and it's like I could have imagined what that looked like but the fact that I got to see it the I was fact, like yeah. Ooh. Well, it's like, also fascinating it's like that character really never turns around like wow, that's interesting. Like yeah. they modeled that. It's like that they never did that. I yeah. think it's just when when you're talking about games that are that simplistic and they do shit and then don't use it. It's like, well, why? Why? Yeah. That's so interesting. Like every decision sure. is so significant when you have that little shit to work with. Oh, I just watched a great one on um, the original Splatoon because like when you're in the hub world, there's like a, an amiibo box. It's a boundary break by a, yeah. a fe- um, yeah boundary. Bro- oh, what's what, that what guy's is, name? I don't know. He's got a great channel though. He's relatively new. Steez something. Yeah, something like that. We'll, look, we'll, I'll post the link. Yeah, look up Boundary Break. It's it's awesome. I, it's my favorite before. channel. Yeah, and so like there's a there's an amiibo box in the hub, and it's like a recreation. Of, you can never see the back of it, but if you take the camera, on, they've like replicated the back of an amiibo box with all the fucking writing yeah. and like the ad, and you're just like, oh, why? <laughs> why? I love it. But uh, back to the point of um, I think just you know games were a big part of my life growing up and I just uh, just the way I am I obsessively learn everything about them but now as somebody who's just more interested in the entertainment industry I think that it's an incredibly important vital piece to any kind of franchise anything mm. games are very very important and I feel like they're not understood by most people especially most people of who are like not. making movies and talking about narrative those are very too, like video game narratives are terrible even the best games like even some of the, the most lauded games like um, like The Last of Us or uh, yeah. What, what was the cow? Fuck. Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead. Like they are okay stories, but mm-hmm. they're amazing stories for video games. And I feel like that's something that but really even, needs to change. I mean, it's funny that that's the bar though. Cause I think it's also you, the way, what you consider a good story is probably completely infected by what you consider a good movie. Right. Well, ex- or what you consider sure. a good book. But or that's, what, like, that's you know, something yeah. that I also want to push is that I don't think the game should be like movies. I think no, that there's no, no, a big yeah. push to like cinematize games. I don't think that's the way to do it. You tell stories in a game the way only a game can. It's so it's hard to get Iron. places. It's it's hard to get places to play nice. We talk about. Yeah. I mean, you know, Marvel and TV Marvel. It yeah. should be fucking seamless. But those they don't. Oh, absolutely. They don't get along. So many like, pictures in talks with Nintendo to make a Mario movie in 2012. Good. That's why right. they have their own games division. Why would they do that? Yeah. Because they don't work together. Yep. That's the reality of it. The so- oh, you mean the Sony, Sony games? Yeah, Sony, Sony Film movies. and Sony Games are just two different companies. And it's, of course, we'll make a Mario movie because there's money in it. Like, fuck right. our games ecosystem. Right. Who cares if it's promoting the 
the competition because we can right. make more money by doing well, by working together with where the movies right exactly <laughs> it's like well isn't that kind of no um and i see like in the short term yeah you can make more money but you're growing the prestige of another character that will overshadow your games division but, but then it's also i mean then that's, then at that point though if they are such separate companies they're just names then sure like sony's just the name so it's like well whatever then shouldn't sony go after what they think is the strongest game property they could yeah. develop or whatever. And that's you know. tight because that's kind of where we're moving with like the Sony and Marvel working together on Spider-Man. They're just like, there's no fighting. It's just like, we can both make a lot of yeah. money if we yeah. work together on this. Let's do yeah. that. It's well, like, I love, oh, yeah, there's okay. all those places doing that stuff and like we have Ready Player One coming out where it's like, and we've had to, you know, we've property from Warner Brothers and Paramount and, and Universal yeah. are all coming together and then Disney's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Rick it Ralph too <laughs> And it's like we can just you guys are all out there trying to fuck you're buying each other drinks and we can just sit at home lube it up and oh, whack off because they just brought yeah <laughs> they brought it all into their house. They don't uh, care. Foolish children. It's like, oh we've got the Iron Giant. Yeah, we have Star Wars <laughs> and Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. Go fuck yourselves. And we are Disney. Yeah. We have Disney. And also Disney, Mickey, Mouse. Disney, Mickey Mouse and the princesses are all together. Together. Oh, remember, remember Blade Runner? It's like, yeah, you remember fucking Bugs Bunny? Because we got, oh, actually, that's the <laughs> no, no, Although, but they did have it. I mean, they co produced, uh, or no, did, no. Warner You're thinking of the other way around. Other way around. When it was Universal, did um, Iron Giant? Rabbit, right? Oh. You, no, it had to be, it was Warner Brothers, because it was all the Warner Brothers characters, and then some, yeah, it was and definitely there was Warner Disney Brothers. characters, yeah. Are yeah. you sure that that's who made that movie, though? It was absolutely Warner Brothers. I guarantee you I'm it is. I'm pretty sure it was Warner Brothers. And it was at a unique time when they could work together. No, but wait a minute. It might have been Disney because they were putting Roger Rabbit shorts in front of, like, um, It the wasn't fan. Disney because Disney, Disney, Disney didn't have the rights movie. to the character because Bonkers was supposed to be the Roger Rabbit television show. That's right. They okay. didn't have the rights to the character, so they made up this cat. <laughs> I know that... I think maybe it was Dick Tracy. There was, like, a Roger Rabbit short in front of Dick Tracy and a couple other movies in the 90s. Sure. Well, I want to know if... Touchstone, I'm, Amblin, he, distributed by Buena Vista, so it is Disney. Oh, so it was Disney, but yeah. it's not Disney. So it was, but it it's, wasn't. It's, but then it wasn't. Well, there's Warner Disney Brothers. characters in it. Of course, Disney yeah. had their hand in it yeah, somewhere. But, okay, yeah, fucking Donald Duck Walt says the N word. Walt Disney Pictures purchased the film rights for it in 1981. So they had there, but then they didn't want it to be like a Disney movie. They that's why it went out with Touchstone. Touchstone, yeah. I I forget there was all Hollywood pictures. Okay. Touched all those fucking. Okay, yeah, so I was to, so I was totally wrong. Yeah, I would have I would have never ever guessed that. I would have never guessed it was like a Disney thing. I'm wondering if this is a byproduct of the bad thing, which is uh, the entertainment industry, full like completely pulling back into five companies. Like five companies mm. pretty much own all holdings, all like subsidiaries, all small things. It's all owned by like just fi like Viacom, Disney, um, Universal, Warner Brothers, and there's one more I'm trying to remember. Um, uh, did I say Universal Comcast? Comcast, Universal, NBC. Oh, okay. That's scary. Well, oh yeah, I already said that. But whatever. But like, isn't Verizon like about to buy? I'm sure somewhere. Yeah, some communications. Probably. Whatever. Warner Brothers. My point or is, is that like that's why these companies can play nice and do these crossover things is because like most of the character rights are held by one company or another company, and it could be two companies talking through each other. There doesn't need mm -hmm. to be an inter intermediary subsidiary company or like maybe some small person holds this. Everything is owned by five people, and it creates yeah. an exciting ecosystem for us as consumers. But it's terrifying sort because of, the, everybody these five fucking companies own everything. Yeah. Sort Which of is not though. good. It's sort of good. It's sort of interesting to us. Well, it, it, because it gives us the fan service that we've all, always sort of yeah, salivated but, but for. The, the fan service I've salivated for, yes, is and this, but this is just the. Some of these are accidents. So it's like there was there were hurdles that shouldn't have been there. Spider Man is a Marvel character. The fact that Sony accidentally owned the Spider Man rights they is the only. Accident, they sold them. No, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like, they like, weren't. They weren't thinking about the long game. It wasn't like it. yeah, yeah. Like when you think, oh, Marvel's doing their own universe. They're gonna have all their characters together. Like. Like in a perfect in in a vacuum that should have just all the characters should have already been there. So it's like we are we had this obstacle that maybe was inorganic, just that Sony had it. Yeah. And then it's like, oh look, they're playing nice with each other. But really, what are we getting? We're just getting the complete package that it is in concept anyway. Right. They Marvel characters all together. But Sony had that. So then it, absolutely. But then, but then so it's they're like, creating this artificial barrier where right. it's just like we're giving you what you want. Look, it's like, but it's like this wouldn't have happened if copyright law wasn't so fucking in, as insane as it is, right? Or if it, it's it's fun. Like I don't want again. We're screaming at mist a little bit. Where it's like, who are you mad? At? Like that's just how it happened. But I don't know. And then capitalism. You, but then it's like yeah. so that's great and all that they're giving us what we want. But 
So something like Ready Player One is an interesting case study because in that it is about fans. It is about it's about fandom and it's about obsession with pop culture and blah blah blah. So that's I why there's that. something interesting about those all getting mixed together because that plays into what the whole thing is even about in the first place. Yeah, I could see that. Right, but I'm so da- I'm not down with that at all. But I'm not interested in really? seeing another one of those where it's just like pat you on the back. I'm going to show you a bunch of things that you've seen before and it'll be my like. I just don't. I know, but I isn't want it, new shit, man. Isn't it interesting that you're fatigued by that, but you haven't really seen it? Yeah, I, but do you know I get, what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I mean, what do you mean we haven't really? I, seen I, I've it? really When's seen the, it in every Marvel property that they've done in the last couple of years. But again, they've given me everything that I've wanted, and that's, now I'm like done with it. But that's mar like that's what's interesting. That's Marvel, though. And again, this is why it's almost like there's this fake synergy in that it's like, well, that's already their whole. Th- that's they own. Those are all their people. Yeah. Those are all their Marvel characters who have always existed together forever. I, I mean, yeah, we've never seen it in a movie, but they've always been together. I'm just playing devil's advocate in that and. And also with Ready Player One, though, that's like the Iron Giant next to a Ninja Turtle is like, what? It's cool. That's not what that's not what's selling. It's just movie like I'm looking at my action figures box and it's just like, yeah, yeah. Is- <laughs> I mean, that's all that is exactly what it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's playing with toys and there's yeah. something cool about that. But then meanwhile, I don't think it's as interesting in Disney being. That's why I was like make, kind of making fun of it, like the masturbatory Wreck-It Ralph thing. Like they think of, uh, uh, the rumor or maybe it was a confirmed thing is that a main plot point in Wreck-It Ralph 2 is that they they the hub is like a Disney fan site. Like a dis oh. in Wreck-It Ralph. Huh. They're in the internet and there's a Disney fan site that they're on. That's cool. Like I get, promote I don't the know. brand, but that's but like to me, there's something incestuous and weird about it. Or, it's like or I'm already like, or, paying for a fucking Disney, Disney is already that brand gratuitous people, or whatever. It's already maybe. been that brand where people are Disney sure. loyalists. They love Disney, which I love Disney me too, too. Yeah, I don't but I will like, never pledge allegiance to a company. You know what I mean? Like right. they are predatory first and foremost. Yeah, you need to remember that. Yeah. yeah, it's very important because otherwise you end up with shit like this, where it just becomes like they're building this cult around Disney. Of, of giving it this importance that, frankly, it doesn't oh, it's, have. That's it's, been built. It's not. It, you're yeah. right. It has been built. It's not a, a cornerstone of our society that they lead us to believe it is. No, of course not. Of course not. So it's, where's the line? Because there's also though, and I, I am just being contrarian right now. I'm sorry. No, please. Uh, but uh, there's also the, the line of where. It, w- because now we're down to being creative uh, dreamers in in Disney has created something and created this this uh, I don't even I want I don't want to say universe but they've created these Ecosystem. characters and this thing and this warm feeling that all everybody associates with being a kid and people have associated with being a kid since the fucking like 60s and 70s before that you know what I mean before I well but, before but, that yeah sure but like I mean more when you're seeing in the 60s and 70s when there's adults that are like ah Disney right for the first time yeah 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 yeah. and and there's there is a uh, I think a genuine worth in that because they've been making good sweet things that people connect to and that people share with your kids that are that are made well that there there's artistry in most of their things but then of course you get those little like they are also just yeah yeah, things like just middle the road like making a new thing thing. no 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 don't bad mouth bolt (laughs) <laughs> Why? Oh, I thought you said Bolt. Bolt? No, Bolt. Like, Bolt. Yeah, no, like Bolt, like the film um, Bolt. That's the Bolt. Ul- my favorite movie. <laughs> that's uh, the, to me. That's Nick. the ultimate white noise Disney movie. Yeah. It's just like whatever. Because it was at the height yeah. of Disney Channel ism before that really fell apart. Because you have Miley Cyrus as like the wholesome oh, little girl character. Right. Sure, but we had like, already fallen is, off. Like our generation yeah, at that point I was, was off. over Disney Channel. But that was right before Disney animation really started to kick ass. I think that that was two movies before Frozen. Because I think. The movie after that was Tangled, and then it was mm-hmm. Frozen, and then well, you're forgetting Wreck It Ralph was in there somewhere. No, it's, that was after. Was it after I Frozen? It was after Tangled, I think. Regardless, that was right, right on the cusp before things started getting good. And in my opinion, that's like one of the worst ones. It was very bad. Yeah, but then it's also that was at the end of like what did we have right before? I mean, they gave Princess and the Frog a shot. Uh, they, they did Home on the Range with the cows. Remember the cow movie? That's funny. Yeah, I never see that. Home on the Range is funny. I never saw. I like that. I like Home on the Range. Um, yeah, Prince and the Frog. I don't know. But, I don't, but uh, uh, point being, I don't love the fake, like, hey, look who we all put it. Like, of course you put all the yeah, people you own in there. They're all your people. Yeah. Like, that's cool and all. But now, again, we're allowing you. It's to funny. See and I, I don't, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I don't wonder why it, why we do feel fatigued with it just be, just because of Marvel and DC, I guess, right? Because they, then they've jumped in and then now everyone's sure. in the universe. So it's like, 
I can't tell if this is a new thing or not. I don't to know. be perfectly honest, or is it? Yeah, is because it a blip? The, it, it's. It, it, you're right. It might be a blip, but I also, I feel like I'm in a loop of content because I just saw a, the premiere of Rocco's Modern Life, a new season, right. and it opens with like we're not in the '90s anymore, and I'm just like, look, I get it. I love Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah, yeah. Kids need to see some new shit, please. Can we get some, like, I want to be excited about a brand new thing. That's why Steven Universe was so fucking rad. I didn't even love it that much, but I'm like, this is a new thing. Sure. Yeah, and it's yeah. got a universe that kids can sink their teeth into. Mm -hmm. And it's like a new, it's almost like a DBZ. It's like a, a we yeah, got these yeah. characters that I like and I know the powers and they're doing these things. Sure. That's fun to me. And I want to see more of that. Yeah. Like, I don't get invested in it as an adult, but like as someone who's interested in the market and, and the, uh, the entertainment industry. I'm like, this is really interesting and valuable for kids. But then we're in this. We're in the era of of grown children where Rocco's Modern Life coming back. That's not. Kind that's of, I'm said. gonna have a great time. It's like, no, 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 no. You're missing the point. This it's, isn't that interesting because of that. It's kind of for the kids on Nickelodeon. It's more right for now, adults. But it's for us. I mean, they made that because they're like. Yeah, they're doing Hey Arnold right, again because they that. know. I hate that. We'll we'll show up and um, watch Hey we're Arnold. We're adults. We have our own thing. Like get, save those channels for new shit for kids for new new yes. artists, but here's the, new but, creators to make new shit. Well, this yeah, goes I back agree to the, with you. But this goes back it's, to the way that media is changing. I mean, are kids even interested in fucking like sitting? And the, the attention is different. The way that sure. kids like consume media. Are they really sitting down and just watching fucking Nickelodeon? Or are they on, you know, is there something on the iPad? I sound like a fucking old man because I don't yeah, use something any on the apps. iPad. Is there some shit on the iPad they're going to go and oh, touch for an hour? He's always looking at the iPad. Right, but if it's compelling enough, kids will always, like, no, no thing has ever supplanted another uh, media platform. Radio didn't destroy books. TV didn't destroy radio. It didn't destroy it, but it, it overtook shrink, All it, it does like, is shrink the market share. There's still value in television, and kids still and watch movies. television I, I genuine, and movies. You know, I, and it, this is you see it, and as much as we sc uh, scream again at the cloud of the vloggers and the and the YouTube thing, as loyal as and as annoying as it is to watch all those people be famous for something that you feel like is worthless or they're not doing yeah. anything, when they transition, I've seen their fan bases turn on them because because people are still watching regular movies yeah. and they're still going to Marvel and they're still go like Shane Dawson and they're still th these yeah. these yeah. kids now these kids who are watching these vloggers are fucking you know on HBO Go at night watching Game, Game like of Thrones shit. and shit <laughs> like things that are narratively and also they're vloggers and then when those people transition over and they make shit they don't so I've seen it you can look on the comments on like trailers for the for the YouTube Red movies and people are like what yeah uh, he's trying so hard like and so so I that gives Absolutely. me faith that there's the the what's the word the like the case study or the, 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 the gold standard is still right. a mo like movies. Movies are right. still the stories. That's what, the visual that's why I'm stories. psyched that like or a lot like of TV, our friends. Good TV is still like that's. Right. It's still it's, what it is. It's still prestige and it's right. still like exclusive because. Right. Look, I get why some people don't respect YouTube people. I get it. I understand. I, oh, I There's like a it. thing. That's why I'm pretty psyched <laughs> that like a lot of our friends are straight up jumping ship. Like, uh, like they want to move into traditional film in a way that's not like, let me ride my wave of being the, yeah, of being no, a, a YouTuber. They're like, I just want to write a script and then make a fucking movie. There's a distaste for it. That's because, a, yes. Because it is, it is, um, you're, you're, you're watching a, a system that has been accidentally perpetuated by reality TV as its center. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I see yeah, exactly yeah. what you mean. And that's weird. And also, and that's how do you, sorry, how do you branch out from that? If that's the, if that's the heart, right. If, if Instagramming and keeping your people updated and Snapchatting and, and vlog and like, that's that's the that's different than any other time where it's like yeah you have whatever teen heartthrob in the '90s that then they put in a couple movies but they were still yeah that was still a larger entertainment industry that was still right. like it's, still it's, wrote it's a just right, right it's just the fan interaction that's like purely what it is that they do sometimes right and it's like well no no those whatever and they then create, where does like that Leif go? Garrett still made value you know what I mean right. like like who who are some of like teen heartthrobs <laughs> like they still like he still put out a record. Record that was sure. that was made that he did a thing on yeah. and created. And granted, granted it, like it existed to prop him up, but it it was something, right? You know? and like who else? Fucking uh, even like Rob Lowe or or yeah. um, or Johnny Depp. Like these are guys. Teen heartthrobs were in Tiger Beat in 1987, and now they're artists. Well, it's like they we didn't know stuff. what we had. Well, Rob Lowe is a whatever. <laughs> I have certain thoughts about Rob Lowe having sex with underage women, but yeah, well. just gonna leave that there. Hey, um, 
He's out there looking for Bigfoot, apparently. He's got a new show where he's like... He's looking, a fucking douche. He's looking for he's Bigfoot. He's a douche. When they were protesting at the airport, he's just like, hey guys, people got places to go. It's like, <laughs> yeah, people want healthcare, Rob Lowe. Millionaire <laughs> Rob Lowe. Uh, fucking whatever. Like, that's the point of a protest. This was all news to me. <laughs> what were we talking I'm about? I'm glad that came this? out, man. That seemed like that was in there. F- yeah. That was, that was bubbling up. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> it's been holding on to that for a couple months. Sure. Um... But vlog and something else that yeah. somebody was talking about the other day of um, this is going to bottom out eventually because frankly there's no money in it there really isn't I'm because there's no way to track so the only real way to turn these vloggers into money is to have them hawk products right or to have them mm. pr- do branded videos and stuff like that and have them associate with brands to have people go that way you can't track that first of all like how many people know the brand that, that's the the classic advertising issue is like we don't know if we're actually getting eyeballs on this and if any of these eyeballs are are turning into well, buyers well yeah valuable eyeballs versus valuable eyeballs right where, where but like, you're talking about a people who they go to this platform specifically because the content is free like right. those people those aren't the kind of people that are spending money right, right. and and it's but then there's also but it's interesting because this is also and we've said this before too with internet stuff and with digital streaming and everything they're able to track more than they ever have been before right but still but, it, but it's views and it's also yeah. what kind of view is that and like, now, where is it? Who is it? But are they spending money? We don't, because right. we can't. No. And I, illegal. I just, I just am of the belief that, like, I mean, I've seen, and maybe this is me, and I'm uh, maybe realizing this now. Why I have this feeling, or why I believe this, is that I watched making stuff for YouTube, and we were uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then right around 18, 19, we started to see people go away. Yeah. And it wasn't, and I've looked back and I used to beat myself up because it seemed like I disappeared for this huge chunk of time, but I was always posting on Facebook and Twitter and I was making stuff every at least couple months for a while. It was yeah. once a month, even through when I was thinking, Oh, it's the death of it. No one's watching me anymore. And it was just because people were growing up. It's like I was, everything's getting funneled down into one spot. So it's like if Disney channel was yeah. one guy and then we all stopped watching Disney channel. Cause we were like, well, I don't really want to like watch that anymore. Yeah. Absolutely. Or like, you know, or I got other shit to do now. I consistently run into like people that watched your shit or I mean, yeah, yeah, I hesitate but, to say our shit, but I, you know, yeah, our shit and they're our age and I run into them and they're like, Oh, I used to watch you all the time. Like yeah. I really thought you were funny. It's like, Oh, have you seen anything lately? It's like, no, like well, I want you to develop into and something I don't who mean appreciates it's, it's, media. It's not, it's not for us to, doing the same thing we're maybe a weird case study too in that it wasn't that we kept making the same stuff because right. it was trying to get better and make different things and change who was watching and blah 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 so with that came people falling off and other people coming in and but it, it's the same it's the thing of like you said the people who are going on there are people who aren't who don't want to pay for anything and they want to just sit and hang out with a vlogger and then every, you grow up and your time gets yeah. split up you, you can't shit to do you can't sit for an hour and watch this person like try. talk about a movie <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> and then but that's and here we are again where it's all it's come back to radio again though because now people are able to do radio while doing other shit Th- yeah. that's that's it i entirely that's why i wanted to do the podcast because i'm like i'm not gonna sit down and watch a 30 minute video of course not but because people said like hey we wanted visual beef every once in a while i'm like okay i'll do a video like that's fun yeah. I, the value of this to me is that this is in your earbuds or in your car or you're do doing some th- other shit yeah, while you're around. hearing me talk about this movie put it on in the bed ba- yeah That's while you're on your computer yeah you're exactly just, you're clicking around you're doing everything you would have anyway and then this doesn't take your eyes away and then it's also like comforting so to hear my voice maybe you're so, just like oh so i like hearing like, hear this guy talk that's weird about you you know radio didn't kill books or like and the tv mm-hmm. didn't kill radio and yeah but it made it, it it funneled it down but then there's the hunger grows because we we stray you stray from god yeah <laughs> <And> you're like <laughs> oh but maybe i do just want to like be told a story yeah. 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 that's the diversity because now it's it's only a good thing because you have a bunch of people pulling for your time mm-hmm. and maybe you don't get to a lot, spend a lot of time with a certain thing but there's more variety of shit to enjoy it's the best time to ever be enjoying shit because if you have the attention yeah, there's span lot, there's the whole universe out there yeah. for you the problem is most people don't I don't. I certainly like. Oh yeah, I don't. I can't read a fucking book. (laughs) I've had a really hard time reading book. Like I've started to read books again lately. Yeah, yeah. But like I haven't read a book in four years. Well, that's why. I mean, we uh, talk about like when you when when you search what you want when you're trying to find the thing that that fits your bill. That's why I mean these mobile games that fits my bill right now. Mm -hmm. I can do that. A book like I didn't know Salem's Lot was five hundred, six hundred pages. So when I got it, I was a little bit like, okay, well, that's a 
that's a bite, you know? And I, whereas I typically, when I'm in Barnes and Noble or if I'm looking somewhere, I find out someone put out a new book. I want to know if it's like 200 to 300 pages. Cause that I can, yeah, I can eat that. And I know yeah. that I can, I can know I can give that my time. Right. You know what I mean? For every single page, there is like some kind of percentage of, is this going to lose me? And I right. think that's my right. issue with long books. Right. Because like I, I used to read a lot of like classic Russian books mm-hmm. um, just because I was a douche. Oh, you don't say. And I, like, <laughs> cause I'm like, you know, trying to read like the brothers Karamazov at, at 16 and I'm like, oh, this was written for rich Russian oligarchs wives mm-hmm. who sat around and did nothing all day. That's why it's 2,500 pages of just sure. a dude doing oh, yeah. a thing. And that's just not, I don't care. I don't want that. You're and not, like every not, page I'm reading, I'm right. like, okay. This is too much. You're not who it's for. And then I, so I snapped back and I was like only reading novellas, like even classic novellas and, yeah. and modern novellas. And that's fine. Cause I could just bag them out in an hour, 20 minutes, like a yeah. uh, uh, crying of, of lot 49 or whatever the, the, the pension one. That's the only Thomas Pynchon book I've read. I've never even like, read pension. Good. Yeah. I like 110, a nice minutes, shorty, 110 pages. It was cool. In and out, man. Dig it. Hey, you should read ocean at the end of the lane. Neil Gaiman's book. Real short. Gay Real man? sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like Gaiman. Good. Came out a couple years ago. I, I, I'm very sad that he married, uh, well, I guess they're not together anymore. Um, Who did he marry? Oh, he's, he's been uh, married. Uh, a fucking Dresden Dolls woman. The, oh, uh, Amanda, Amanda Palmer. Palmer? Oh, boy. Holy Christ. <laughs> Good Lord. Wait. You. Well, the problem I had with her is like, she was, uh, she was like trying to get people to come play with her, like come on tour. She needed a band. Um, and she said, I'm not going to pay you. The like beginning to perform with me will be like payment enough. Like it was the most conceited blog post mm-hmm. asking for like. That's a bummer. Yeah, it was a real bummer. It's the internship thing where it's like, yeah. oh, you know, give us labor and maybe you'll get paid for your labor later. We don't know. It's like, well, fuck like, you. Dude, I can't. Just pay me. If you pay me minimum wage yeah, yeah, to yeah. do this, that's fine. Yeah. I'm being compensated for my labor somewhat. There's yeah. no this, this like, this um, existential concept of success. That's what you're giving me. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you're paying me. I'm in. not going to do internships if I ever get in a position where I can have. Sure. If you're in college, it. though, straight up do it. If it's like a three hour week internship, fucking do it. Do as many as you can. But if you right. get out of college and you don't have a job, you're if your parents are supporting you, don't fucking take an internship. Go get a regular ass job and then work on it on your side. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not successful, so maybe don't take my advice. But it's just well, not it's hard. Right. It's, it's not it's, right. It's a self-sustaining, uh, you know. What's the what's the thing from Spider Man Two? Self perpetuating issue. The uh, yeah, Mr. So, Aziz, I left the pizzas. Yeah, that one. Uh, uh, you know, it's line. it's it's self sustaining <laughs> now. So the problem is, you do need to like do that stupid free shit yeah. to get to stick around. It's like I don't know. It's that it's. <laughs> There are millions and thousands of people. I mean, if we're going down the entertainment industry, shit, yeah. like there's so many fucking people who are doing this and yeah. who are trying to do this. And it's like, you need to, there, there needs to be, you know, waves of like people who, who, yeah. you know, when the first was, I'm so, he, <laughs> is that necessary? Wes, why did you need to tell him? He didn't, yeah. it doesn't no, matter. Okay. okay. He was, t- no, he please was finish your thought. There will always be, it needs to come off in ways where you need to prove yourself through like tears of the fucking sure. battle royale where it's like, oh, are you one of the people who stuck around when you weren't getting paid? Okay, cool. Then maybe we take you seriously. Are you one of the people who's going to do this for real cheap? Okay. Maybe you yeah. are. Maybe you are really taking, maybe you're like a uh, cut above the people who will just give up at this point. Right. Cause you don't want the people, cause it is one of those things where when it's anything exclusive, you don't want the people who would have given up if they weren't getting paid. Right, like that's true. Like I get it from their perspective. Entertainment is unique, though, but because yeah, it's weird. It's when you're weird. writing something, because when you're writing something, if you're not creating value for the right. person you're writing it for, why would they pay you anything at all? Right. But if you're like some paralegal or something, or you want to be a lawyer, you're like a, you're, maybe you're interning at like an ad agency or something, and you're writing copy, mm-hmm. you're providing value. You're making right, the money right, and right, you're right. not getting paid a dime. Yeah, that's fucked not fucking right. But yeah. you know, if you're like writing stuff that's not getting made like i i I, it's a shitty position to be in and it's fucking really annoying but it's like that i can at least understand from a i don't have an issue with capitalism until it gets outrageously greedy like that like we're literally gonna suck the life from children to make money no you're preaching to the choir here because it's like i've now i've been in both sides both positions of this where there's of course there's the you have to just put time into it that's no one's paying you for because of course because that's anything that you want to ever do sure forever 
you like, well, if you love this, you would just do it for free. And that's f- true to an extent, because of course it is. But then there's the other side where when I'm actively being asked to provide material, and this has happened like three times in the last few months, where I'm, I've been asked, can you give, can you write this for us to look at because we're interested in the thing? And then I do it. And then they say, well, can you change this? And then I do it. Can you change this? And then I do it. And now we're two months into this sort of thing that I was putting X amount of hours a week into. And they say no. <laughs> and you're like, well, right. how is that fair? Sure. You wanted it. I wouldn't have done it if you didn't ask me. And I mean, you could say that that once you're in talks, right, that's when you probably should be getting compensated because they're getting money for developing this. They're getting money for you giving you notes to make this thing. Well, wh- and then when they say no, they're not making any value for their company. So why is it right that you didn't get paid for your labor? Well, it's that's their, they're, they're getting paid in that it's their t- the time that they're spending doing it is time that they're being paid for. Right, right? but they're not, they're also not providing, they're not providing labor because they shut down the project. They don't develop it into something that makes money for their company. So they just wasted your time, stole a bunch of money from whoever they're, they're working with and then had I a guess, failure. But development is weird. It's sticky. Cause I understand, I understand that you can't just take a shot. You can't just throw money at everybody. It's uh, there's a, there's a line. There's a line. I, I don't it. know where I the, get it. But my point is that you should have been at least yeah, somewhat something. compensated. Something Some if they were interested. Bit. Like I don't have a problem with them getting paid because their time is valuable. Yeah, yeah, of course. So is yours. Cause you're in, in talks to make a thing that could potentially make them money. Like, you know, if you, if you hire someone to contract, like to draw something, it's basically, you have to pay them for that. And there's, yeah. there's, and don't get me wrong. Cause I don't want to sound like a brat about it too. Cause you do, I do appreciate it's that these are, these are humans who not to put them on pedestals because it's not that they're like godlike or anything, but they're people whose attention is being demanded in a thousand different directions. It's true. So when they're giving you attention, there's a value in their attention and me and like, I should appreciate to a certain extent being right. like, well, it's cool that they're even that they're giving the notes back. Cause that means they're interested in it and that's valuable in mm-hmm. its own way. But like, I don't know. Where's that? Right. Basically but at the well, end of the day, like, yeah, I appreciate it, I mean, but I'm fucking hungry right now. Yeah. Cause I can't afford how it gets categorized though, is that it's them asking almost just as people asking me, can you give us this so we can make the decision of whether or not we want this? Sure. Are you able to spend your own time writing this so that we can make a better judgment? But it's just, I don't know, man. I get it. Really all that's happening is that it's like, again, if I was, that would, these things wouldn't, they wouldn't sting as bad if also I was getting paid for it elsewhere, but I'm not. So it's like every time there's this thing and there's that promise of, Hey, work on this, try this. What about that? What if you change this? And then it just leads into a, well, Mm -hmm. I kind of just wasted my time. And then there's the other element just to put the positive spin on it though. I do then have a more developed thing. Yes. Like at the end of it, even when they say no, I'm like, well, then now I have this 10 page treatment and that's, I have that's theoretically more sellable. Yeah. And then now when I go to the next place, I've already spent the time. So I guess, yeah, let me, re- let me reframe it for, to make my own self, my own self feel better. <laughs> the optimistic way to look at it is like, not only did I spend time, I would have spent anywhere trying to develop something and then take a stab somewhere else. The time that I spent developing it, I was also being paid attention to and nurturing a relationship with somewhere. True. Yeah, sure. I guess that's the way you have to look at it. But money would be sick. Relationship. Money yeah. would be great. Money would be great. Um, people really want to hold on it's to that It's tough, stuff. dude. It's a fucking... It's a frigging grind. It's, it's just, just unbelievable. Crazy. The thing that fucks me up is just how much money is in the United States and how yeah. little it moves. How it yeah. just doesn't... People should be getting paid all the time for whatever shit for no reason. Yeah, There's yeah. so much money. Money should be moving around. And like any economist will tell you that that's what a good economy does. There's money moving. There's exchanges right. happening. But when we, we pass... Le- whatever. I'm getting more political. When nah, we pass legislation fine. to make it all suck up and stay in a bunch of dudes' pockets, I don't advocate like the theft of of finance like i'm not no, quite, no. i'm not that socialist yet but like at a certain point it's like come on come on like just fucking make it move around a little bit so everybody could be happier instead of you being slightly happier i don't even know yeah. i don't even know what compels a man to do that i don't know what compels a person to do that i can't imagine it warped perspective yeah, yeah. i guess it's, my brain it's, your it's, brain chemistry changes yeah i mean I, I, no just, I say warped is maybe negative not to yes because of to insult all the billionaires listening to reasonable no, but fuck yeah. you guys but like it's like developing a new sense like when you have an ability to do what Whatever you right. want at any time, yeah, you're you just, like, your I get it. Different. I mean, it's you look at back to Shia. Like I was thinking about this when we were talking about it earlier. Like that dude lived in a world I cannot fathom yeah. since he was a child. Mm-hmm. And then you're watching someone who who, whereas we might have a little mental breakdown and at home alone, you might have like this very singular. 
I'm sure. stupid. I can't believe I did this myself. You spent or what? He is in front of people all the time, and I think maybe thought that that's where you do that then. Yeah. Right. Like that you break down in front of all the people who are always watching anyway. And he wanted to lash out at the people watching him. And that's fucking sad. You're watching someone who everything he was doing, him crying with the paper bag on his head. Oh, that's dude. like, that's a thing that something that should have been happening to somebody yeah. on the floor of their kitchen. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> like <laughs> they can pull out their yeah. bag of bags, take out a grocery bag, and just hide inside the bag of bags. Mm-hmm. Oh, but Jesus. Yeah. I don't know. It was, what was I getting at? Yeah, the billionaires, they, they live in a different universe. They live in a different world. Their perspective is weird. They can't imagine. Like, whereas now we've spent, we're in that safe zone of like, you know what? If any of us ever are very wealthy, we spent 25 plus years having no money. Like, sure. And, and not coming from a family who had a lot of money. So we've, I feel like we have put the baseline of a perspective already there. Yeah. It's been coded. It's getting the, the next The problem is codes. that people like us usually don't make the money it's usually the children of the people who already had the money sure they make more money right like donald yeah. trump i got a, a small loan of four million dollars from my father oh is that all yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that all T- loan of ten thousand dollars would be the the, the world or well, yeah, build a company yeah. earth shattering for me i feel like if somebody gave me ten thousand dollars i could live forever I, i'm pretty sure <laughs> that's, that's I could true just man keep going i just eat it and i'm immortal <laughs> all right guys yeah. i really got a piece so i think we're gonna wrap this up that's um bad. what do we do I don't know. This was a good conversation. Yeah. Very passionate. I well, hope you guys are like ready to fucking join the Democratic Socialists of America. <laughs> Please at DSA on Twitter. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, that's boy. what the rose Here's in my profile is all about. Bread and roses because people deserve to be compensated for their labor. Um, any thoughts? Any final thoughts? If there are any children of billionaires who listen to Reasonable Beef, go upstairs into daddy's wallet and I want you to sign on to www.patreon.com <laughs> slash Reasonable Beef. Just put all those numbers in and the three on the back yeah. and God, what you want to give. <laughs> It's like, uh, yeah, you get that. Th- I've always imagined like someone stealing my my credit card information and then they don't have the zip code because that happens to me every time <laughs> oh, I try shit. to buy. What, the fuck? what zip code did I put? God damn it. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you guys. Reasonable. This is my bonus beef. Thank you so much for Patreoning. As usual, I really appreciate uh, everything you guys do. Your finances help us yell about finances. Yep. We had a critic on the state of entertainment industry. Okay. Dom, start it off to, to Nick to me. Okay. When you think you have enough money you are wrong <laughs> <laughs> the united states of america da, 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 da. there are no cats in america and the streets are paved with cheese are you doing five 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 goes west. Okay. wait is it american tale yeah that's yeah, american tale five goes west second one hey goodbye everyone you guys hungry yeah impossible my balls aren't there it's in my other pants pocket only it doesn't make a bit of difference guys can't be my balls are inert uh does that mean they don't work yes